All right. Hey, everybody. Um, good evening. I'm Dr. Mark Suter, Periodontist from Bloomington, Indiana. Sorry, I've started a little late tonight, had a little uh, technical difficulty, but I wanted to uh, try to post some information today on, um, on what are cavities, you know, how do cavities form, what's the best way to um, prevent cavities, and what's the best way for your dentist to be able to uh, help you figure out whether you have a cavity or not. So one of the biggest things that people need to understand is that cavities form around our teeth because of the opportunistic ability for bacteria in our mouth to turn things like this into uh, acid. So if um, I were to take a big swig out of this Coke, um, the sugar in this Coke would um, be, uh, the bacteria in my mouth would love that because it would turn that sugar into a um, acidic environment in my mouth and that acidity is something that will deteriorate my teeth. So when people drink sugary things or eat sugary things, um, one of the things I was taught one time from a nutritionist is when you look at products, the number one thing that's listed on the product first is the most common or the greatest ingredient in that product. So it's interesting when you read Cokes, the first ingredient, unfortunately, is sugar. Uh, even Gatorade, I looked at um, this Gatorade bottle. Uh, unfortunately, it has a lot of sugar in it. Um, so even Gatorade bottles are kind of a, a, an unfortunately not very good option for a lot of people if they're trying to prevent themselves from having cavities. So the biggest issue is, you know, the pH in our mouth. We talk about pH a lot in, in the health of our bodies. So remember, a, a, a neutral pH is at 7 so you either go below seven or above seven, and that's where you kind of run into some key factors. So when your mouth turns acidic, that pH gets lower, so it's a lower number. That acidity is what deteriorates your teeth and what makes, uh, what starts to uh, cause cavities to form. So we like to do things to create a more basic or alkaline environment in our mouth. So anything that would raise the pH would be beneficial. So a good rule of thumb is if you eat something sugary, if you simply just rinse your mouth out with water, it's kind of a little trick that you could dilute some of the uh, acidity aspects of that and uh, just sip some, sip some water. Uh, I was on a, a plane where you know somebody was just sipping a Coke for a long period of time and the thing that, that you gotta remember is the minute that you take a swig of this, uh, the sugar in your mouth, the sugar in the product actually keeps your mouth um, really acidic for about 45 minutes. So if you just sit there and sip something like a Coke all day, your mouth pretty much stays in that really acidic environment. So that's when your teeth get decayed and you get cavities, your, uh, your teeth get soft, they break. You can get cavities around <coughs> fillings, under your bridges, you know, anything that is, that is prone to that. Uh, can really deteriorate your dentistry. So I'm going to talk about something called xylitol. All right, so if you're playing like the hangman game or something, you want to come up with a really hard X word, uh, xylitol is um, a product that is found in a variety of things nowadays, one of which is this ice cube gum. This is a really great gum to chew. So if you're a gum chewer, this ice cube gum they look like little, literally like little dice, right? These, uh, this gum has xylitol in it. And what xylitol does is xylitol helps decrease the effectiveness of the type of bacteria that <clears throat> cause cavities. So if you chew gum like this, uh, you know, if I think of it or if I'm in the car, uh, I'll chew a couple pieces of this gum. Um, if you do it throughout the day, it's actually Sorry about that. Um, I guess somebody wanted to call me. Um, so anyway, so, so that's a really good option. Um, another option is people tease me all the time because I have these suckers in my office, right? And people are like, you know, dude, what are you doing? You have like candy in your office. You're trying to give me, you know, cavities. And that's not it at all. This company called Dr. John uh, makes a xylitol impregnated sucker. So if your kids like to like think they're having, they want to suck on candy, you can kind of fool them because it feels and tastes like candy, but it actually has something in it that would actually decrease their chances for cavities then increase their chance for cavities. So here's something really bad. If you give your kid a sucker, 
and he sucks on this thing for minutes and minutes, that acid in his mouth, let's say he's young, he has baby teeth, that acid will deteriorate their baby teeth really quickly because as they suck on that sugar, those bacteria continue to keep this really acidic environment in their mouth and it's horrible for them. So have y'all ever heard of baby, baby bottle syndrome? It's a condition in which a mother would give a baby a bottle of sugar water or any product that would have a sugary ingredient and to kind of soothe the baby, they may stick it in the baby's crib and then he or she sucks in this bottle for hours. And what will happen is their baby teeth will literally deteriorate. They'll just decay, in some cases, all the way to the gum line. And the really unfortunate thing about that is our our children's baby teeth are really important to preserve the underlying developing permanent teeth uh, that are that are present. So when you're a child is developing their permanent teeth, they have to develop underneath the baby teeth and eventually they'll push the baby teeth out and that's how the permanent teeth come in. So when your child is about six, you'll notice uh, these permanent teeth come in the, in the bottom usually and uh, six or seven, they start coming up on the top. So they start resorbing the roots of your baby teeth and permanent teeth come in. So my point is, Keeping your baby's baby teeth healthy is really important. So if you can keep their teeth healthy from age six months or a year when they first show up in their mouth all the way to probably about 12 or 13 when you usually lose your last baby tooth, uh, those are really important years for your kids to uh, keep their mouths healthy. So, so remember Xylitol. Um, I was going to show you something before. You know how we talked about good oral hygiene? I forgot to show you. I created this little uh, toothbrush for a, for a patient who had a difficult time holding a toothbrush because of arthritis. So I took a tennis ball, I punched a hole in it, put the toothbrush in it, and just taped it up with a little electrical tape, it doesn't matter, but secure it. Now the patient can hold the tennis ball and be able to brush their teeth better because now they can hold on to something that's bigger as opposed to just a little skinny toothbrush. So if you have a patient or a family member who has difficulty because of arthritic conditions or sometimes they have a stroke and they've lost the real uh, functionality of their, of their hands. Um, this is a great little trick. So use a ball, put a toothbrush in it, secure it some way, and now you've made this really great oral hygiene aid for someone you love. So pretty. I wanted to show you that before and I forgot, so thought I'd bring that up. So I'm going to um, show you something. I had a patient uh, today, uh, actually yesterday, that I uh, <clears throat> had to unfortunately take her tooth out and because she had a big cavity in it. So this tooth actually has a big dark spot in it. I don't know whether you can see it or not. I'm trying to put it a little closer. So the dark decayed part of a tooth is what happens when you drink something sugary, the bacteria produces this acid, and it begins to deteriorate, to deteriorate your teeth. So if you notice the outside of the tooth, this is called the enamel. I'll grab my little pointer here. So the enamel is the normal part of our tooth. But once that enamel gets decayed, you'll notice that the enamel starts to erode. It gets softer. And <clears throat> unfortunately, that part of the tooth is no longer hard. Many times it's, it fractures. And <clears throat> when you talk about needing root canals, which we'll talk about sometime in the future, this tooth... If you get decay like that, that decay gets inside the nerve of the tooth, and that's when teeth hurt. So when you have a toothache from a cavity, it's because the decay has gone inside the tooth, and unfortunately, sometimes it will penetrate the nerve in the tooth, and then you have tooth pain or toothache. So when you have a toothache from a cavity, that's kind of the reason, one of the early reasons why you want to see a see your dentist. The key is your dentist could do so many cool things to diagnose cavities while they're in their early stages. And like any other disease, the earlier we treat things, the better. So your dentists are great at doing x-rays or visualization, or there's, there's even lights and different things that you can do to detect early decay. So your dentist, if they tell you, boy, Mrs. Jones, I, I see some areas where the, the bacteria is beginning to deteriorate your enamel, <clears throat> don't wait to have it treated. Let your dentist treat that soon because the sooner they treat it, it won't turn into something like this. 
So unfortunately, when your tooth gets so badly decayed and it has to be removed, <clears throat> then you lose your tooth. He, this patient also had a cavity in the root of the tooth right here. Um, so when you get root cavities, that's a very um, advanced, really problematic thing. Did you know that the, our population over 60, there, there, we, some people have to take so many medications. The average medication list is about three to five medicines for people that are over 60. And unfortunately, there's hundreds of medicines that we take that dry our mouth out. So here's another complication with cavities. If you have, if you drink something sugary and your and you and and your mouth is really dry, your saliva, the way God made us, is our saliva helps to buffer the acid that's produced. So there's this fight going on. You drink something sugary, the bacteria love that, so it starts breaking down the sugar into acids. Your saliva starts producing a buffering uh, part of that to try to neutralize the acid. So it's trying to help you out. So if you have really dry mouth, it's called xerostomia. If you have a really dry mouth and you drink something sugary, your saliva can't help you. So then people have a lot of cavities because their mouth is dry and they may have a sugary diet. So talk to your dentist. A lot of times the dentist will give you a fluoride, either a fluoride in your office. They can give you a fluoride to brush on your teeth, which would be really important. You can take some fluoride that has the equivalent of brushing your teeth five times a day. So your dentist, like Dr. Kurt Van Winkle, just uh, I see join, uh, they can help you be able to uh, give you things to take at home where I give patients a fluoride where they can brush, up their, brush that fluoride on their teeth. Uh, and when you go to bed, that fluoride helps harden your tooth structure to try to counterbalance the acids that you may have had or the sugary foods that were creating acids that you may have had during the day. Does that make sense? So early detection, really important. So another good reason to see your dentist a couple of times a year is because if you're prone to cavities, your dentist can pick up cavity formation really easily. You know that little instrument they use where they kind of measure around your teeth and you know some people call it a poker? It's not. It's a, it's a way that dentists can indicate whether the enamel of your tooth is getting softer to the point where that acid is deteriorating your teeth, right? So if they tell you there's a cavity or, or there feels like the part of your tooth is getting decayed, pay attention to that and, and get it treated because the earlier you treat it, the less likely you need more complicated fillings, the less likely you need a root canal, less likely you'll lose your tooth. So like any disease process, the earlier you can treat it, the better, okay? So heed your dentist warning. If they say, boy, it looks like you got something going on, don't put it off, you know, and treat it sooner than later. So what I wanted to leave you with was simply the idea that cavities are formed from ingesting sugary things. So sugary foods, sugary liquids. This is probably in today's society, probably the riskiest thing because a lot of kids, if they're playing sports, they're sucking down a sugary, potentially a sugary drink for hours. Um, throughout the sporting event or during practice. And unfortunately, that acid now sticks around in your mouth for uh, hours on end, unless you're doing something like counterbalancing it with xylitol, xylitol gum, xylitol uh, products in general, or again, simply rinsing your mouth out with water. So a little trick, if you drink something sugary, if you have a little water, and nowadays there's some really great water that's a, a neutral pH, uh, make sure you, uh, you, you check that because there was some data that said some purified waters actually have uh, an acid um, pH like below 7. So that's not good. You don't want to be drinking, and I don't want to down any products, but I think Dasani water was one of the waters that was proven to possibly be more acidic like be below seven. So I would check it out and make sure that the water you're drinking is really neutralized. Uh, my wife found some water at Sam's uh, that was actually like alkaline. So it was above seven. So that's a great water to drink, right? So, so find that. So that's really important. So remember your, your X word for the day, Xylitol, you know, it's one of those stumpers. You, if, you, if you do it on your hangman game or, or you play a game where you're trying to figure out stuff and you always want to pick a hard, a hard name, 
And that's, that's uh, you know, my X word would always be xylophone. So, so xylitol is a great thing to understand. Um, and, and cavities happen to us because we're human beings. We have bacteria in our mouth. And unfortunately, a lot of the foods that we eat really have a lot of refined sugars in them. <clears throat> the, the statistics and how much sugar the average person digests is really scary. I mean, it is pounds and pounds of sugar throughout our day. And most of the time, we don't even know it's in it. I was reading an article in a men's journal that was comparing hamburger. This is amazing. They were comparing different companies' hamburgers. And you realize some companies put sugar in their hamburger meat? I had no idea. And I'm not going to mention any products, but there are some people who literally eat a hamburger, have no idea that that hamburger is going to make their mouth acidic. I didn't. I literally didn't know that. I feel bad that I didn't. But, uh, you know, you learn something every day. So anyway, so I apologize for being late tonight. Uh, we'll talk, I think, t next uh, Tuesday. I'm going to bring in a model, and I'm going to show you when a dentist or hygienist cleans your teeth and, and removes tartar or bacteria off your teeth. I'm going to show you exactly what that bacteria looks like and why your dentist is going to suggest having that kind of cleaning done so that when you have your teeth healthy, you don't wind up with holes in them like this or with gum disease that ends up making you lose your tooth. So I want to be able to help you keep these in your mouth for the rest of your life. That's my goal. I'm Dr. Mark Suter. Hope you all have a great night and I'll see you next week.